about to take the plunge. Try them up. Tourists on snorkels and fins during an excursion to Magnetic Island off the coast of Queensland, Australia. Tour operators Stephanie and Adam Hinks are introducing them to one of the seven natural wonders of the world, the Great Barrier Reef. I hope to see a turtle and some um, colourful fish. But the underwater world that awaits them is increasingly vulnerable to climate change. In March, the world's largest coral reef system dealt a fresh blow, suffering yet another mass bleaching event, impacting more than 90% of the corals surveyed. When we have a bleaching event, we want to get into the water, we want to see what effect it's had, we want to... They're all like our little babies, you know? We want to go and check out every little reef patch. The reef generates more than 4.3 billion euros for the Australian economy each year, with marine tourism supporting more than 64,000 jobs. We rely on guests to be able to come and visit and to see the reef. Those livelihoods are at stake as marine heat waves become more frequent and more intense. The latest bleaching event was the sixth since 1998, but the fourth just in the last six years. Yet the coral can survive. Coral bleaching is much like heat stroke in a human. A person can get heat stroke, and as long as they get cooled down quickly enough, they'll be fine. Coral bleaching is exactly the same. It's a stress condition that you would rather avoid entirely, but just because you get the stress condition, the heat stroke, doesn't mean that you'll necessarily die. The newly elected Labour government will spend more than 800 million euros on protecting the reef, funding to pour in over the next nine years. About two-thirds of that is to work with farmers to improve land use practices and reduce pollution from agricultural land to the Great Barrier Reef. This sprawling 13,000 hectare farm is home to more than 2,500 cattle. <laughs> Garlon Moulin and her family were among the first in the region to use time-controlled grazing more than 20 years ago. Sustainable practices later adopted on other farms neighbouring the reef. The grazing principles that we use are loosely based on the big migrating herds in Africa, where the big migrating herds come through, but then they're gone again and the country can recover. And it makes a very big difference to um, keeping the ground covered and stopping soil erosion. The property is part of a triple river catchment that sends the highest sediment load to the reef, some 70 kilometres away. The grass really armours the soil from water erosion. We found that if we had any bare soil when it rains, it runs into the creeks and rivers. But measures taken to improve farming practices are just one piece of the puzzle. <coughs> That's a great idea to do, but it's not addressing the elephant in the room, which is global warming. Many insisting on stronger, urgent action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and prevent further mass bleaching. It's like 10 Category 5 severe cyclones coming ashore holding hands in terms of the scale of, and, and the severity of the loss of corals. It takes about a decade for the fastest growing corals to show a half-decent recovery. We no longer have that length of time between these recurrent bleaching events due to global warming. Over the past financial year, federal and state authorities allocated 7.8 billion euros in fossil fuel subsidies. While the new government has more ambitious climate targets than the coalition that was in power for nine years, it says it will continue to support and expand the country's fossil fuel exports. That's despite promises to turn Australia into a renewable energy superpower. This solar farm near Townsville in Queensland opened in 2018. Its 40,000 solar panels generate up to 116 megawatts of electricity, enough to power 54,000 homes. I think there's a lot of potential for growth in solar in, in Australia. We have a large land mass here and there's plenty of sunshine around. It, it is a new technology in Australia and as it develops, I'm sure we'll see more and more solar farms opening throughout the country. While momentum for clean energy is growing, it's unlikely the country will latch on in order to phase out coal power by the year 2030. Climate scientists say the planet must limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius 
to give natural landmarks like the Great Barrier Reef a fighting chance of survival. We are all the custodians of the reefs around the world and to think about coming out and getting under the water and seeing nothing, that, that really does scare me. Coral reefs around the world are projected to decline by a further 70 to 90 per cent under a temperature rise of 1.5 degrees Celsius. At 2 degrees, experts warn 99 per cent would disappear.